Welcome back, everybody. It's Jill with Go English Coach. So we've got uh, the next grammar section I've got is doing the present perfect and the present perfect progressive. So simple past, right? If we have, uh, this is our little timeline, the simple past, and this is present here. Simple past is just a one point in time that is started and stopped in the past. One point of time, okay? Present perfect is something like this that starts in the past and continues to today. Or it might have ended in the past as well. I have built a house. Let's see. So it started in the past and maybe it didn't get finished. So I have built a house that is something that is done. Okay. I have lived or I have been building a house. Boom. This is present, started in the past, and it's continued to today, and it's probably going to go into the future, okay? And it, we usually here discuss a period of time with that as well, okay? So let's just take a look. So this is, we use this in describing something that happened and completed in the past, okay? So when we use present perfect, it's something that started in the past but might not be finished. So you can say, I have lived in uh, Montana for 10 years, okay? Um, I can also say, I have been living in Montana for 10 years. Now, the question then is, is what's the difference between those two sentences? Is there a grammatical difference? I have lived in Montana for 10 years. That means, let's make our little chart here. Okay, so if that means 10 years ago, um, this is now. I started, this is 10 years ago, okay? I started living in Montana 10 years ago, and I still live in Montana, and it's possible that it will continue into the future, okay? I'm pretty sure I'm not moving from this state very soon, <laughs> okay? So I have lived in Montana for 10 years, but um, so it started in the past and it has an indefinite ending. The ending is not, we don't know when it's going to end, if it's going to end, okay? So it started in the past and continues to today, okay? And notice how I used this. If I say for, I can use a period of time. So for, we're going to use for, and since, these are your two main, when we start giving a timestamp to it, we're going to use four. We're going to use four to talk about a period of time, okay? And we're going to use since when we have a point in time. What does that mean? A point in time. So we could say, for example, here, a period of time could be um, 10 years, two weeks, nine months, etc. Okay, those are just examples. Okay, so that's a period of time. It's, and then from here, a period of time, right? It means it's like this. This is a period of time. A point in time is just one point. So we're going to say, um, I have lived in Montana, we could say um, since, oops, that is not since, since 2013, um, since uh, August, right? Since last year. I've lived here since last year. Okay, so those are points in time. 
So that's when we use for and since, and we really don't mix those up. They don't, they don't sound right if you change them. So let's talk a little bit about how we form these, okay? So this one and this one, what are we doing here? So we've got a couple things going on. So I, I like to use um, formulas, okay? So we've got the subject, right? That's here. We've got a form of to have. So we've got either have or has. So this is in present tense. She has, they have. And then we've got the, the participle. This is a participle. This is just an example. So we had base, we had past, and then we had participle, right? So here's where we start using the participle. So the, pa the base form of the verb is come, past is, came, and the participle is come. This is an irregular one. So a regular one would be like um, travel. We use this word a lot. The past is traveled, right? Just ed. And the participle is traveled, okay? This is not always the case, but this is, an, this is a regular. So this one is irregular. This is regular, okay? And again, if you guys need to review those and go back over it, go back to the previous classes from last week. And then we did a whole list of all of those irregular um, the verbs in the past in the participle, okay? So um, for example, another one to be, the past is was or were. Okay, and then the participle is been. Okay, so that's what we did here, been. All right, so what we're using for this here is the participle, this part, which sometimes looks just the same as the past tense, and sometimes it does not. So you really need to practice those, okay? So this is our formula. I have built a house that is something that started in the past and is now completed, okay? Let's do a couple more of these. I have lived here. Let's use since or for since 2000, okay? Let's see, a couple more examples. Let's see, she has read the book, okay? Here you don't need to have something. Um, like a timepiece. So she has it. Also, you could say she's read. Okay, how about this? I've been to the museum. I've been there. I've been there. I've been to the museum. Okay. Great. Okay. And then Let's let's add on to this and look at this. This present perfect progressive, you use have been and then another form of the verb. So I have been trying. Um, I have been trying to get a hold of him. So what do we have here? So we've got the subject. I, I is the subject right here, right? And then we have the form of have. So we've got have or has, okay? And then we've got been, okay? And then we have trying. That's the last part here. So we've got the main verb with, so I-N-G. And then you've got the rest of the sentence, okay? I have been trying to get a hold of him. Um, so you've got lots of verbs here. This is your um, main verb. These are auxiliary verbs. You've got one auxiliary verb, two, the main verb, and then your also talk of to get a hold of is another verb, okay? I have been trying to get a hold of him. What does that mean? It means like to contact, like maybe you're trying to call somebody or maybe you're emailing or texting, but it's set the, what you are implying is that this person is not answering and is not getting back to you, 
Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Let's do a little bit of practice. Sometimes I think that these grammar presentations can be very difficult. And then when you start practicing it, it's just like so much easier. Okay. <laughs> 